Winter showing no signs of letting up. Snow squalls, below zero wind chills, and the potential for a snowstorm early next week. The Red Sox getting sued over Be Strong, the foundation preserving Little Boy's legacy that may take on the world champions. Outrage over the punishment for a pair of arsonists. They are dangerous. They put people's lives at risk. The sentence firefighters say is too light. And a Massachusetts road project on time and on budget? Why the state says the Callahan Tunnel may actually reopen early. Live from our studios in Boston, WBZ News at 6 starts now. Now at 6 o'clock, a family visit for the accused marathon bomber with the Fed sitting in. And Johar Sarnayev might regret saying too much in front of the FBI. The government could use what he said against him. Good evening, I'm Paula Evans. And I'm Jonathan Elias. Good to have you along tonight. Jack and Lisa are off. Now, the FBI says that agents were within their rights to sit in on all of Sarnayev's family visits. Lauren Lomanchek joins us now with the details of new documents released just late today. Lauren? Well, Jonathan, the defense wants the special security measures in place for Johar Zarnayev relaxed so that the FBI isn't sitting in on those family conversations. That's after Zarnayev may have made some damaging statements in the presence of the FBI. Now, the request centers on visits at the federal prison in Devons, where Zarnayev is being held, and that's where his defense team and his sisters may have got or did go to see him. As you can see, some of these documents were previously redacted, but now that the judge has unsealed the documents, we can see why the defense may have been so upset about the issue. In their filings, Sarnayev's attorneys say an FBI case agent has been physically present during the visits by the defendant's sisters. But prosecutors argue that was part of the deal, saying social and legal visits may not be combined. The agent's presence was legally permitted. And then they get to what they believe is at the heart of this issue. Quote, Sarnayev, despite being in the presence of an FBI agent, was unable to temper his remarks and made a statement to his detriment, which was overheard by the agent. Now, the documents do not shed any light on what Sarnayev actually said. The judge still has to rule on the request. Jonathan and Paula? Or Lemanchuk, thanks. We have developing news this evening out of Ukraine. Russian armed forces are now taking over an airport in the region of Crimea. Ukraine's U.N. ambassador says Russian military helicopters and transport planes carrying some kind of cargo are entering the country. And CBS News reports hundreds of troops are being flown in. Now, President Obama just made a statement of the situation not long ago, warning there will be costs for any military intervention in Ukraine, which is undergoing political upheaval. We are now deeply concerned by reports of military taken by the Russian Federation inside of Ukraine. Russia has a historic relationship with Ukraine, including cultural and economic ties, and a military facility in Crimea. But any violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity would be deeply destabilizing. Now, the president says the situation is still very fluid, and the U.S. will continue to work with allies in communicating with the Russian government. Scott Pelley will have much more on the president's statement and what's happening in Ukraine coming up at 6.30, CBS Evening News. It was a mess for drivers in Boston this afternoon. Look at the video. This is from inside the Tip O'Neill Tunnel, where a car fire filled the tunnel with smoke. That fire forced state police to just shut down the northbound side of 93 while the fire was extinguished. Now, the accident has been cleared, but as you can imagine, still some backups. And we're facing a very bitterly cold night tonight, and right on its heels, we got a snowstorm. Todd Gutner joining us now with the AccuWeather forecast. You know, we've said this a lot, almost too much this winter. So it goes this winter, right? Yes, yeah, some are talking about the cold, but most are talking about this potential storm for early next week. And here it is. It looks like a hurricane in the Pacific Ocean. It's bringing beneficial moisture to California and the West Coast. And then the energy from it will move across the country and give rise to a new area of low pressure. And this band of precipitation, mostly snow, which won't be very wide, only a couple of hundred miles wide, and with it, some heavier bands of snow, which will likely set up just south of Boston on the south coast. But today, the trend has been to shift the moisture in that heavier snow south. And if that trend continues, it's going to make a huge difference in our snowfall estimates. As of now, as it stands, early next week, Sunday night and Monday, we're looking at three to six inches south of the mass pipe, with the highest chance to get around six inches or slightly more on the south coast. But as you go northbound, north of the Mass Pipe, very little snow at all, maybe just a coating to as much as three inches. I'll have more on this storm, and we'll take a look at our seven-day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Jonathan.
Okay, Paul. Thank you, Todd. Well, now at 6 o'clock, it is the logo the Red Sox and their fans wore with pride through last year's World Series run. We've seen be strong on signs, hats, even cut right into the Fenway Park grass. But there's another charity that's used Be Strong for years. And now as Karen Anderson shows us, they may sue the Red Sox. Two logos rallying two communities now in conflict. That is the main, main purpose behind us seeking, um, you know, to, to shut down a lot of these users that really should not be using the logo at this time. We love it. We've had it for seven years, and we want to keep it. Gary Abood of El Paso trademarked this Be Strong logo for a foundation named after his son, Braden, who was killed in a ski accident. It's synonymous with my son. Now Abood says he wants to file a lawsuit against the Red Sox for this logo that rallied the region after the marathon attack. Just marching in and really trying to, trying to in some respects, uh, strip the logo from, from this foundation and utilize it for profit, and, and I just think that's wrong. The Red Sox say until they read about this in the press, they didn't realize the discussions they were having with the Braden Abood Foundation were not progressing to resolve the matter. In a statement, they also say the Red Sox look forward to future such discussions and to a positive resolution, one that would allow our distinct charitable interests mutually and successfully to coexist. You have to just look at these two marks and, and think would consumers be confused viewing these two marks in the marketplace? That's the key question, according to attorney Anderson Duff. He says clear differences in the logos, like the distinctive Red Sox B, create a challenge for the El Paso Charities case. I think just looking at the, at the two designs, I, I think that they probably do have an uplap. Karen Anderson, WBZ News. MBTA police say they have found the man who attacked two people and swore at a little girl on the red line. 40-year-old Calvin White of Boston was arrested just yesterday. Transit police say that on Wednesday, White started swearing at a little girl in the Park Street station. And that's when a passenger tried to shield the girl and her mother, and he was attacked. So was an MBTA worker who tried to break up the fight. Tonight, firefighters south of Boston are not happy. Two men blamed for a terrifying arson spree are going to prison, but not for long. Over the course of four months, starting in the fall of 2012, there were at least 24 suspicious fires in cities and towns south of Boston. The responsible could have received up to a decade in prison, but as Bill Shields tells us, the judge handed them a sentence mentally is too light. In the fall of 2012, the fires raged one after another in southeastern Mass, 34 in all, spreading fear among residents and firefighters alike. The charge of arson violates your home, it violates your business, it violates your soul. Now, 46-year-old Mark Sargent and his stepson, Jean-Marie Lewis, have said it was them, at least three of them, to them. In this case, what makes this stand out is the randomness of it, the fact there is no good reason why... The prosecutor wanted Sargent to be locked up for 10 years, but Judge Carol Ball said she was bound by state sentencing guidelines. That when, uh, when someone is sentenced, they can only be punished for the crimes that they're charged with and convicted of. But the district attorney wasn't happy that Sergeant would only go to jail for two to three years. It said the judge could have been harder on him. They put people's lives at risk, firefighters, the, the regular community, and I think they needed to go to more time than that. One of the fires destroyed a dozen boats at a Marshfield marina. One of the owners said, at the time, the boat was the least of his worries. Is it going to happen again? Are they going to attack my son's boat the next time around or burn down our house? What did we do wrong? Whether you agree with the sentencing or not, there was one question that was never answered. Why? Why did he set those fires? In Brockton, I'm Bill Shields, WBZ News. A dump truck slams into a Malden home, and tonight the driver is facing drunk driving charges. That truck hit the front of the house around 9 o'clock last night, and the woman inside at the time was vacuuming. That's when she felt the whole house shake. Could have been my kid. You know, he missed the kids two minutes. Well, I dropped everything because I thought it was an earthquake, and I was like, oh my God, there's an earthquake happening. In fact, her two boys were in that part of the house just minutes before the crash. Tonight, the family is staying in a hotel while repairs are being made. The driver of the truck, Keith Bouglet, faced a judge this afternoon. Investigators say this is his second OUI charge, and they did find several beer cans inside his truck.
Coming up on WBC News, inside the Callahan Tunnel, almost ready to reopen. The deadline that will be very expensive for contractors to miss. Plus, falling flat. The MBTA's plan to sell station naming rights runs into a big problem. Today's harsh cold will moderate over the weekend, but a potential snowstorm looms. I'll have the latest on the track and amounts coming up after the break. Tim just refinanced his car with a DCU Second Chance car loan. He saved so much on his monthly car payment, he could afford the down payment on something a little more fun. Hello, hello, it's President Smokey, you know. No phony President sale, the lowest prices every day. Hail to the chief of quality choice and value. Unpaid competition, $2,300 for this bedroom. But mine is even better at only $1,199. Just untouchable value. A man pioneers a way to see the unseen. Radar. Forever providing safer journeys. The Mazda 6 uses radar in its available class-exclusive suite of seven safety features. For greater confidence behind the wheel. Introducing the Mazda 6. What do you drive? Now, lease the 2014 Mazda 6 Sport for $199 a month for 36 months. Based on a real car insurance claim. Really. I was just sitting there in my little car, and a street sweeper started sweeping me down the street. AAA can't control who or what's on the road with you, but we can promise you fast, personal service and a smart approach to car insurance that can save you a whole lot of money. Really. You gotta be kidding me, right? How much can you save? Get a quote from AAA today. It's the Bar Honda President's Day sales event. Come on down. At Bar Honda, we have everything you're looking for at one of our two great locations. Bar Honda on the Auto Mile, Route 1 in Norwood, or Bar Honda West on Littleton Road in Westford, Mass. Drive home a brand new Honda CRV 4x4 for just $148 per month. Two great Bar Honda locations, one legendary low Bar Honda price. You got it. What makes Grayer Gardner Furniture Outlets a smarter way to shop for furniture? Come see for yourself. We've got the biggest selection of brand name furniture around. American made, traditional, contemporary. With over 200,000 square feet of quality furniture and decorating ideas, we've got your style. And more than 250 brand names at outlet prices. Four outlets, one destination. In the furniture capital of New England, Grayer Gardner Furniture Outlets. Winter sale going on now. Instead of asking, how much can we make on each customer? At DCU, we ask, how much can we save each member? New at 6, a look inside the Callahan Tunnel, now closed for two months. And highway engineers say they're nearly finished. Yeah, the tunnel is supposed to be open on March 12th. But, as Paul Burton tells us, authorities say they may actually be ahead of schedule. On time and possibly ahead of schedule, the Callahan Tunnel is now just weeks away from reopening. Progress is going very well. Uh, we expect, we definitely expect to finish on time, if not a little ahead of schedule. And for every day a contractor finishes before the March 12th deadline, there's a $71,500 a day bonus. If they were to finish late, we would deduct $71,500 for every day. And what we're walking on now is the new concrete deck. As you can see, it's about two and a half inches. We'll actually use asphalt to bring that up to that point, and that'll be the wearing surface for the vehicles. The 52-year-old tunnel was shut down for renovations back in December. It was Christmas Eve 2012 when one of the wall panels fell onto the ground. The next few days, Mass DOT found hundreds of defective panels. They say the biggest challenge for this $25 million project has been the demolition. Contractor used some, actually used high uh, water pressure to 
demolished the deck. He actually washed away the top six inches of the old deck. These new stainless steel clips will not corrode like the previous ones did, which is what sparked the entire investigation. The new clips will hold the new prefabricated wall panels. Now, highway officials say the panel project will not be completed by the time the tunnel opens on March 12th. The wall panels are going to go in over a series of overnight shutdowns once all the clips are installed. The Callahan Tunnel is a major artery to Logan Airport and carries, on average, about 30,000 cars a day. In Boston, I'm Paul Burton, WBZ News. Sunny day outside, but then when you walked outside, not so sunny. I mean, the sun was shining, but it sure wasn't feeling warm. And lucky Todd Gutner, he gets to talk about another little snow event at the end of this call. Oh, he's right, living Todd? the dream. Oh, yeah, we're living the dream here <laughs> in the Northeast this winter, aren't we? Yeah. Monday storm, here are the latest headlines for it. For some, it looks like a plowable snow, especially south of the Mass Pike, closest to the area of low pressure. Monday morning's commute will be a snowy one and a slow one, but at least it's going to be a fluffy snow, right? With little wind impacts or coastal concerns, this should be a fairly manageable storm, at least at the moment that's how it looks. No sign of the storm here in the Northeast. It's going to be a crystal clear night and a nice start to the weekend. You find the storm way out here in the Pacific Ocean, and boy, is it impressive. It looks like a hurricane out here with an eye, and it's crashing into California. They really need this moisture badly. They're getting rain in the lower elevations and mountain snow through the Sierra. It'll take some time to get across the country, obviously, so we have some time to watch it. Clear tonight and frigid again. Some of the suburbs north and west of the city could dip down below zero by tomorrow morning. Boston's low temperature will be 12. Saturday, a partly sunny day with an increase in the afternoon cloud cover. High temp gets to the freezing mark with light wind. It actually won't feel that bad. Lows tomorrow night, 25. Kind of balmy for this time of the year. And it'll be cloudy on Sunday with some flurries moving in for the afternoon as that storm gets closer. Your afternoon high temperature, 38. But late in the day, the wind swings to the northwest and that taps cold air. And that cold Arctic air will be back in place here to start again uh, and early next week, which then sets the stage for this storm system to get to us. And there'll be this moisture working in from the Ohio Valley and this band of mostly snow into the northeast. The heaviest of the snow right now looks like it'll set up just south of Boston, but the trends today have been shoving it even farther south. And if that occurs, this will make a huge difference with our snowfall estimates. As of now, our forecast stands like this, three to six inches from the pike down into southeastern Mass with the greatest chance to get that six inch mark or maybe even a little bit more on the south coast. As you go north of the Mass Pike, it doesn't look like much at all. and certainly doesn't look like a lot up in ski country, but there's plenty of snow on the uh, ground up there, and skiing conditions remain great as we head into the month of March. Active weather, seven-day forecast. Tomorrow, partial sunshine, high 32. Sunday, clouds and flurries, 38 degrees. And then the temperatures nosedive. Snow is likely on Monday. Again, a few inches in a plowable snow for most. Behind that system, it stays bone-chilling cold, 25 on Tuesday and Wednesday. But then there's a sign that we may moderate a little bit. By the end of next week, we get another little taste of spring by Friday. A week from today, we could see high temperatures in the middle 40s. I'll have an update on the snow forecast tonight at 11 o'clock. Hope to see you then. Guys, let's get back to you. All right, Todd, thanks very much. So March 1st tomorrow, and we get some football news. Yeah, Patriots may not be playing right now, but they're dealing. Yeah, getting ready for two big parts of their offseason. Right. So it starts today. All right, yeah, this is the time of year when NFL teams try to maneuver themselves as far under the salary cap as possible as they gear up for the draft and free agency. Patriots no different, and today they said goodbye to a familiar face on defense. The Patriots have released safety Steve Gregory. The eight-year veteran spent the past two seasons here in New England, appearing in 26 games for the Pats. With the move, the Patriots are saving $2.85 million, which is expected to put them somewhere around $12 or $13 million under the salary cap limit. That's good news. Meanwhile, Pats quarterback Alfonso Dennard will begin his 60-day jail sentence tomorrow in Nebraska. Last February, Dennard was convicted of assaulting a police officer there in 2012, for which he was sentenced to 30 days in jail and two years probation. Then last July, he was arrested for suspicion of DUI, and his jail time was then doubled. However, with good behavior, Dennard could be out in 35 days. Now the baseball, Red Sox and Twins at JetBlue Park today, first Grapefruit League game of 2014. A little confusing, both teams wearing red, but Sox pitching prospect Anthony Renato impressive. Two scoreless innings in the afternoon. Later on, outfielder prospect Bryce Brents crushing a home run to center field, but the Sox lose this one 8-2. Basketball Celtics news, Gerald Wallace has a torn meniscus in his knee and will need surgery that will probably end his season. Brad Stevens also saying Wallace will also have a procedure done to fix bone spurs in his ankles. 
as he's practiced today in Waltham. Danny Ainge and Rajon Rondo apparently cleared the air yesterday, air, air yesterday about the Celtics captain's decision not to travel with the team to Sacramento last weekend. Instead, staying in L.A. to celebrate his birthday. Today, Brad Stevens said he was happy with how Rondo responded to the controversy in Wednesday night's game. I sent him a text yesterday because, you know, it's not easy when you're kind of in the middle of a, of a storm cloud to go out and perform or go out and, and put forth the right amount of effort. And, you know, we don't win that game if he doesn't dive on the floor when it's 23-10. I'm dead convinced. It turned the whole game around. It turned the whole game around. He dove on the floor, cut up his chin. We got energized. It became contagious. And that was the best way that he could respond to everything. Meanwhile, another day of practice for the Bruins in Wilmington today as they get set to host the Washington Capitals tomorrow afternoon at the Gardens. The time off for the Olympics will now begin their own version of March Madness with 17 games in the month of March. You just have to take uh, game by game and, um, you know, whatever happens in one game, forget about it, move on, and, uh, and try to win the next one. We get uh, a lot of back-to-backs, get 17 games this month, but kind of uh, comparable to last year with that shortened uh, season, so... Awesome, we got a taste of it anyways. And in college hockey, special night tonight over at BU as the Terriers will honor their longtime coach Jack Parker, who retired after last season. Parker guided the Terriers to three national championships during his 40 years behind the and is third in the NCAA's all-time victory list with 897 wins. Parker's number six will join Travis Roy's number 24 as the only retired numbers in the team's illustrious history. It should be a special electric night over at uh, BU. So congrats to Coach Parker once again on a great career. They've had a heck of a team for a long, long time. Yeah, at BU, BC, they've just been so good for so many years. It's been fun to watch. No question. Danny, thanks very much. Thanks. Well, the CBS Evening News is coming your way next at 6.30. Scott Pelley is in Los Angeles to just us live in a preview. Good evening, Scott. Paula, Jonathan, good evening. Great to be with you in Boston, as always. About an hour ago, the president came out into the briefing room at the White House and told Russia that there would be costs if Russia invaded Ukraine. But our David Martin, working and talking to his sources at the Pentagon, tells us that is apparently what, the, what is happening at this very hour. We will have David's report and a report from the White House on this fabric story on the CBS Evening News in about 10 minutes. Scott, we'll be joining you then. Thanks so much. Still to come for us, a local filmmaker wins a trip to the White House, and this visionary is only in the ninth grade. <laughs> CRV, the fun to drive Civic, or at least the award-winning Accord for just $199 a month. That's a sweet deal. Seems we have a presidential Accord. The Honda President's Day sales event has just been extended at your New England Honda dealers. Excuse me, do your dentures come with a guarantee? <laughs> is really about what you can't see. That's what Jordans and nowhere else will not only tell you, we'll show you what's inside every mattress we carry so you can touch it and feel it. It's important to us, and it should be important to you. At Jordans, there are no secrets. My dad is always saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch. That's why I couldn't wait to tell him about really free checking at Commerce Bank. 
There's no minimum balance and no monthly fees. And he gets free mobile check deposit too. So then dad says, I'm gonna switch over to that really free checking account at Commerce Bank. Thanks for the good advice. Maybe he'll finally buy a smartphone. Attraction challenge is on. The all-wheel drive Toyota Venza versus the worst winter driving surface AMCI testing can create. Ice. Traction test number one. Front wheels on ice. Traction test two. Rear wheels on ice. Now, all four wheels taking on 50 feet of ice. Result? Venza three. Ice zero. The winter-ready all-wheel drive Toyota Venza. Proof it's possible to have utility and style. website is such a mess at this point, it may be scrapped. The consultant trying to fix the health connector says one option being considered is to start over and build a new site. The state is facing a deadline by June 30th. More than 200,000 people have to switch to health plans which comply with the new federal programs. There's a big problem with the plan to sell the naming rights to MBTA agents. No one wants to buy them. The T put the naming rights for its stations out to bid, however, only one offer, and it didn't meet the minimum requirements. The D hoped to raise up to $20 million with those naming rights. An amazing honor today for a student from Manchester by the Sea. Look at Alex Emerson. We got the video to prove it. I know, there he is, right there. He's on the right side of your screen with the curly hair, with the tie, that's him. He's right standing behind the president at the first White House Student Film Festival. President Obama personally praised Alex's movie, which he made while attending the Brookwood School. We've got Alex Emerson, uh, who's, who, who showed us how his, uh, his eighth-grade class at uh, Brookwood School in Massachusetts changed the definition of pen pals by video chatting with students in Uganda. One of the things was collaborate on cook stoves that help families in rural areas cook safer and with cleaner energy. Big congratulations going out to him. The teachers at the Brookside School were gathering this afternoon to watch Alex at the White House. They only learned a few days ago that he would be actually going. His eighth grade teacher actually told our producer that he wouldn't be surprised to see Alex accepting an Oscar someday. Let's see if he's in the eighth grade at the White House. That means do the math, carry the four. He'll be uh, getting his Oscar in about three weeks. That's right. He's be like Matt and Ben. That's well, right. Ten years from now. <laughs> well, coming up next on WBZ News, change at the Museum of Fine Arts. The man who transformed one of Boston's best institutions now plans to move on. Huge captioning is brought to you by. Wachusett Mountain. Mountain fun, minutes away. Clickwachusett.com. Good afternoon, everybody. As promised, the flakes are flying. When winter weather hits New England, WBZ Chief Meteorologist Eric Fisher covers it like no one else. Now the mobile app for the lab. This is where we're going to be seeing most of the snow stacked up. Conditions are just right in the atmosphere. As we head through the night, that mixed line starts to move in. Join Eric Fisher and go wherever the weather takes at weeknights on WBZ News. The Subaru Dealers of New England Washington's birthday sales event is going on now. Buy a brand new Subaru Outback with symmetrical all-wheel drive. Standard. The Outback was awarded Top Safety Pick Plus by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Drive home a brand new Subaru Outback. Well equipped at $23,795. Subaru, Don't miss the Subaru Dealers of New England Washington's birthday sales event. It's home. It's family. You want what's best, and you expect a little more. And at Bernie and Phil's Furniture, you get it. We sell upholstered furniture, like the Runway Collection. Fashion forward, yet durable, thanks to its innovative pocket coil technology. And how's this for a little more? Purchase $9.99 or more this week and receive an instant $100 Bernie and Phil's gift card. One year of free financing and 20% off of future purchase. Bernie and Phil, Bernie. My dad has atrial fibrillation, or AFib. He has the most common kind. It's not caused by a heart valve problem. Dad, it says you're AFib, but you have five times greater risk of stroke. That's why I take my warfarin every day. Looks like maybe we should ask your doctor about Pradaxa. In a clinical trial, Pradaxa de Vigatranotexalate Mesylate was proven superior to warfarin in reducing the risk of stroke. And unlike warfarin, with no regular blood tests or dietary restrictions. Hey, that's the point my doctor. Sure. is not for people with artificial heart valves. Don't stop taking Pradaxa without talking to your doctor. Stopping increases your risk of stroke. Ask your doctor if you need to stop Pradaxa before surgery or a medical or dental procedure. Pradaxa can cause serious, sometimes fatal bleeding. 
Don't take Pradax if you have abnormal bleeding or have had a heart valve replaced. Seek immediate medical care for unexpected signs of bleeding, like unusual bruising. Pradax may increase your bleeding risk if you're 75 or older. A bleed condition or stomach ulcer, take aspirin, NSAIDs, or blood thinners. Or if you have kidney problems, especially if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctors about all medicines you take. Pradax's side effects include indigestion, stomach pain, upset, or burning. If you or someone you love has AFib not caused by a heart valve problem, ask your doctor about reducing the risk of stroke with Pradaxa. Life is full of surprises. Some good, some not so good. Don't get caught by surprise. Ask an independent agent about safety insurance enhanced coverage for auto, home, and business. Safety insurance will help you manage life's storms. The CBS Evening News, celebrating 50 years of the very best original reporting. After nearly 20 years on the job, the director of the Museum of Fine Arts is planning to retire. Malcolm Rogers will step down once a worldwide search for a successor is finished. But Rogers has transformed the museum in so many ways. He literally opened doors restoring the Huntington Avenue and Fenway entrances that had been closed for years. And Rogers oversaw the construction of the new Art of the Americas wing. Inside the museum has added nearly 68,000 pieces to its holdings during Rogers' tenure. Uh, Out of all. Well, congratulations to him and a great job there. In all this cold weather, might be a good time for a museum visit. <laughs> <laughs> right? you got to do a lot of things indoors lately. Well, the cold actually retreats a little bit this weekend, but snow returns Sunday night and Monday. And it looks like a few inches north of the pike and perhaps three to six inches south of the pike with the greatest chance to get more than six on the south coast. It's a few days away, so we'll continue to fine-tune the forecast. I'll have an update tonight at 11 o'clock. So what you're saying is we won't be bringing our lawnmowers out of the basement until <laughs> July. But you can send them there to get them <laughs> tuned up, you know, for a couple of months from now. Good call. <laughs> Want to thank you for watching our next newscast coming your way at 10 o'clock over on our sister station, My TV 38 Have a good evening, and right back here for WBZ News at 11. Tonight.